Okay, we have our uh, mission breakfast at 9 o'clock in the morning with a representative from down at the uh, uh, Christian Care Center in Leesburg. Uh, also, we'll be having our mission board meeting following that breakfast. And then in the afternoon, the uh, Board of Trustees will meet at 4 o'clock. On Thursday, at 6 o'clock in the evening, we'll have our Holy Communion service for Monday Thursday. We walk through the entire Passion story uh, with uh, our deacons each reading a portion of scripture uh, that help us to uh, visualize and experience it right from God's word. And we also share at the Lord's table our uh, Holy Week, Easter, Holy Communion uh, on Thursday night at 6. Then on Friday, the church is open from noon until 3. Uh, for our prayer vigil, our Friday, uh, Good Friday prayer vigil. And then uh, on uh, Sunday morning, uh, Easter Sunday, uh, one of our favorite times of the year, uh, we'll celebrate the resurrection of Christ from the dead. And you're waving to me. What are you, why, why are you waving, Rick? We're up. Oh, oh, you're up. You're up. For those of you who just joined on the Internet, we're sure glad to have you. Kevin, Kevin's been practicing all week. He would have been just heartbroken if you couldn't hear him. So we're, we're, glad, we're glad you're back. Okay. Anyway, so that's the schedule for the week. Next Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday, we have uh, beautiful music. Uh, we have uh, Billy will be here to sing. Uh, Pinky will be here, uh, former star of Beauty and the Beast. And uh, uh, she's got some beautiful, beautiful music for you. Uh, and uh, Kevin's got some great stuff, so I, I uh, challenge you to come for Easter Sunday. You'll, you'll love it. Uh, during the service, we do our traditional uh, message for the young at heart with the live duckies and the resurrection story. And afterwards, we're going to go outside and we're going to uh, release the butterflies, which is, of course, the ancient symbol of resurrection, the butterfly, and of new life. Uh, so we'll be doing that. We'll also be dedicating, uh, in memory of Jane Katzen, the beautiful stained glass windows uh, that were installed Friday and Saturday of this past week in the tower. And thanks to my, my buddy Jack uh, Baird for helping uh, get the lighting uh, rigged up up there so we can backlight them and they're, they're going to be lit at night. Uh, we, we tested that out. It's, it's pretty cool. You'll have to come by it uh, sometime in the evening after dark and see it. Uh, the, the, the windows match the windows that you see out on the narthex. Uh, I thought it was pretty funny. I said to somebody the other day that was here, I said, they, they've been coming for years. And I said, uh, yeah, the new windows, and they match the windows in the narthex, the stained glass. Do we have stained glass in the narthex? I said, yeah, right there. Oh, I never saw those before. <laughs> Okay, so anyway, uh, if you've never seen them before, take a look on your way out, and then when you get outside, look up at the windows. They don't show up as well in the daytime as they do at night, but uh, you can still see it. And it's the same theme. The butterflies are a little bigger so that you can see them better, uh, but I think you'll, you'll enjoy it very much. Um, let's see. Flowers on the altar. We've got a lot of flowers today, beautiful flowers. Uh, Al and Betty Eisner have put flowers there in, in the vases there in the memory and in honor of mothers, and their mothers and all mothers, and we thank them for that. Uh, the floral centerpiece, one of the two floral centerpieces is there in uh, celebration of the 64th wedding anniversary of Jeff and Jesse Edwards. So happy anniversary. And then when I tell you this next one, you're going to be even more impressed at her singing and maybe even impressed that she's still mobile enough to get up here and do it. The lovely Billy Thatcher's 71st birthday. before Christmas, and I just never got a chance to give it to you, and I, I thought, you know what, I might as well wait, and you'll see why I waited. Oh, get it. I want you to open it. <laughs> you didn't have to do that when you were 61. No. <laughs> 
listening to Billy with her, her British accent. I said, is she from England? I said, no, she's from New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, but it was, if you didn't get to see it, I'm sorry, because it was just phenomenal. They were, they were just, she and Pinky and Bob Stamen, the whole cast, it was, it was just a really great uh, production. They did a great job. And, and hasn't Sue sung here too, the director? Yeah, yeah she, she's, she's been, been here, here too. Yeah. So a whole bunch of people that were involved in that that, that Kevin has brought to us over the uh, over the time. Speaking of music, I want to remind you that the uh, magical bronze will be here uh, on the Saturday after Easter, the twenty third. Uh, tickets are on sale out there when you leave. Uh, they are twenty dollars, and the proceeds go to help the magical bronze educational work and also our infant toddler pantry. We split it. And uh, it, you, you won't be sorry you came. It's, it's, it's a beautiful, beautiful afternoon of, uh, of music, and uh, we're advertising it on uh, it's on the internet. Rick has it on our website. For some reason or another, and uh, I have no idea how, uh, the fellow who writes the articles for the uh, the paper got the time wrong. Uh, in the nice, we had a nice article yesterday with the wrong time. And uh, it's not at 7 o'clock in the evening, it's at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, I don't even think they do evening things because they've got to all get back to Orlando. So uh, it's at 4 o'clock, it's what's on the ticket, it's what's been in all of our advertising, it's what's on our website. I have no idea where 7 o'clock came from. So, uh, but anyway, forget, if you read the article, forget 7, don't show up at 7. Uh, I, there won't be any. So, okay. Uh, this afternoon, we have our Easter egg hunt for the children of the uh, pantry. Uh, I think there's like about 130 plus kids signed up. Uh, that doesn't mean they're all going to show up, but uh, we, have, we have candy and we have uh, a group of ladies from up at the uh, Eagle Ridge Golf Association coming. We're going to set up two tents, and one tent's going to give them a, a stuffed bunny, and the other tent's going to have the Easter bunny uh, with uh, candy for them. And we could use some help. Uh, actually, Jack, uh, we could use some help right after church. Uh, we need a couple guys to help set up the two tents. They're those pop-up deals. So uh, if we could get a couple guys, see Jack uh, Baird before you uh, run to your car. And uh, if you're physically able, and uh, we'd, we'd appreciate your help. I did mention that if, uh, that we have a, a breakfast this Wednesday at 9. If you haven't picked up tickets for that, please do so. Uh, because that gives us a count. The ladies have to know how many to prepare for. Also, on uh, many, many of you remember that I announced a couple of weeks ago that our good friend Bill Lewis passed away. And uh, there was a, an obituary in the paper in the Daily Sun this morning about Bill's life, which you can read. You can also read the same thing in the program that we're, we're printing and putting out uh, for the service. But anyway, that, that service is on May the 7th, Saturday, at 11, and it's followed by a luncheon. And uh, if, you want to come, if you want to come to the service, just show up. But if you want to come to the luncheon, we're asking you to call the office and just let us know how many are coming. So, uh, and if, if no one's in the office, you can leave a message on the recorder of how many people are coming to the Bill Lewis uh, Memorial Service luncheon. So, uh, and also, if you think of it before you leave, there's a sign-up sheet out there in the Narthex uh, where you can also sign up for it. Uh, I'd really like to have a big turnout for this memorial service. Uh, Bill and Karen have been with me since the very beginning of, of this church. They're part of the originals, uh, the charter founders of, of the church. Uh, Bill has, has been such an asset to not only our church, but the community. Uh, 
He and I were on the board of uh, the Martin Luther King uh, Scholarship Fund for a number of years. Many of you remember he's the one who would always sell us tickets, and he did so much hard work for that scholarship fund and donated a lot of funding to it as well. So uh, this is the fellow who deserves our, our support and to be honored. And uh, I, I really hope that you can take an hour of your time to, to come out. As I always say, things like this, if you want somebody to show up at yours, you might want to show up at theirs. So, uh, Jim, yes. the sign-up sheet in the narthex is for if they can bring a dessert or a salad. Oh, is that what that's for? That's what that's for. That's not if it's not, it's, it's not for their attendance. It's for, okay. No, it's for salad or dessert, and just check off which one. Thank you for straightening me out as usual. <laughs> so, so if at 11... It's at 11, so if you can make a salad or you can make a dessert, we're providing the meat trays and the rolls and the beverages, but we're looking for salads and we're looking for desserts, okay? Here's something quickly, I don't, somebody found this in the parking lot, it's an adapter, it goes into an iPhone, one end goes into an iPhone, the other you can, it's yours. <laughs> If I'd have known it was Kevin's, I would have said you can have it back for 25 bucks. <laughs> you guys, I would have liked to have it for free. So. Okay, uh, let me get this quickly. Uh, oh, what's that? Oh, the Richmond Academy? What, what is your lecture on? Kevin's lecture on reading music at the rec centers or online. Okay? Okay, sounds good. And, and, and of course, you'll be mentioning from time to time throughout your lecture about the congregational church and that there's plenty of good seats available. Good man, good man. I, I knew you wouldn't let me down. Yes, talk about my singing and how reading music might save them from that. Yes. Okay, uh, let's see. Just, 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 just. Oh, and I mentioned last week, uh, we're having Ben's Church as part of this. I was over at Ben's Church yesterday for their kids' program, and they had a bouncy house and a, and a basketball thing, a blow-up basketball thing, and uh, food and singers. And it was a, a, they, they did their egg hunt yesterday, and uh, a lot of great people at Ben's Church. And uh, so uh, his church was kind of the, the impetus to get started this revival service that we're having down, uh, down the road here to the south of Brown's uh, uh, Farmer's Market. And we're going to set up big tents. And I think there's, a, there's five or six churches now involved in it. And Ben is going to sing. Uh, there's a whole bunch of preachers uh, going to participate, a lot of other singers too. Uh, it's the last three days of the month of April, basically. 28, 29, and 30. Uh, if you've never been to an old-fashioned revival, uh, it's, it's kind of fun, and God knows some of you could stand to be saved. So anyway, uh, just, yeah, I'm just kidding. So, uh, yeah, come, come out, and, and you'll, you'll enjoy it. We've got, and, we, and on Saturday's family day, we've got a bouncy house and all kinds of stuff for families, and we're going to have a setup uh, to tell people about our infant toddler pantry ministry. Uh, as well. By the way, that's enough announcement stuff because we have some wonderful music. And one of my favorite uh, things about Palm Sunday is the, the song of the Palms. And Kevin's going to play that for you now.
Romans. Good morning. Good to be back here. My second church. <laughs> eternity rolled. He touched me, oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something happened, and now I know he touched me. And made me whole. Touched me, oh, he touched me. And all oh, the joy that floods my soul. Something wonderful happened, and now I know. Thank you, Ben. Just before the uh, call to worship, I wanted to mention to you, I gave you these palms, and uh, you'll see the beautiful, beautiful palms up in front of the church. We have brand new palms out at the front entrances, and uh, I want to thank uh, Mike Morefield's family uh, for doing that for us. Uh, Mike passed away about a year ago now, and he, uh, he used to always take care of the palms inside and out, and the flowers out in the uh, containers out in the uh, uh, Memorial Garden. Uh, he was just a great guy, a hard worker, and had had a gift. I could I could plant an African violet if he did in two days. This guy could resurrect a palm that was dead for two months and still come back. I mean, he was he was phenomenal with uh, with plants. And so uh, we are uh, Mary Lucas, who was his dear friend, and uh, also uh, his daughter. Uh, Linda and, and their family uh, came during the week, and Jack and I had taken out the, the ones that had been out there that he put there uh, quite a while ago and kept nursing them back to health, and they had died, and uh, at least we felt there was no resurrecting these things. So we, uh, we took, had taken them out, and then his daughter came by to drop off a donation at the pantry and saw that and was just kind of mortified that Dad's plants were gone. 
And so she, uh, she said, to Carl said, I'm bringing new ones. Mary calls, I'm bringing new ones. So they came over and they, they put those beautiful plants out front. And the art is gorgeous. These are just beautiful uh, for Palm Sunday. So thank you uh, so much to, to Mike's family. And uh, we remember Mike uh, with great fondness. And uh, we miss him uh, very, very much. So uh, these are in memory and in honor of Mike Warfield uh, for Palm Sunday. We worship together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, our voices ring in praise. For enters our great leader, so our palms we raise. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, we will follow all our days. We come to follow the path to Jerusalem. Are you ready for your journey? The shadow of the cross beckons. Come, hail our King. Let us pray together. Come, Christ Jesus, come to this place. We wave our palms and sing our hosannas. Welcome you into heart and mind. Come, Christ Jesus, come to this place. Welcome us into your heart, Lord Jesus, as we welcome you into ours. Come to us with the hosanna of life, even as we turn to the cross. Amen. This time we'd like to invite to come forward those who have... Uh, uh, decided that they would like to become part of our church family and join the church in membership. I'm going to have you come and stand in the front here. And we ask the congregation to take out your mission statement form. We're so happy and honored that you've decided to join with our church as uh, members uh, to become uh, the next step in, in the fullness of becoming part of this uh, church family. I think you'll find a, a generous family that you're joining. You'll find a group of people who uh, love one another and take care of one another. Uh, you'll see it in the cards that they send and the notes that you receive. You'll, you'll see it in the friendly uh, people that you'll meet here in church and in our coffee hour programs and so forth. Uh, we always tell people, our congregation is as friendly as you are. 
I ask you now in the presence of God to uh, answer the following questions. First of all, do you sincerely desire to unite with this church family as part of the body of Christ? If so, answer, I do. And do you promise as you join the church to profess your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, answer, I do. Do you take your uh, mission statement and congregation? Let's all say this together. As the church, we have made a covenant with the Lord and each other to bind ourselves in the presence of God, to walk together in all His ways as He is pleased to reveal Himself to us in His Holy Word. We seek to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit through prayer, worship, the study of God's Word, and fellowship. We seek to build and maintain a caring, believing, and ministering community. We seek to challenge and encourage all members to fulfill the mission of our church locally and worldwide through prayer, deed, and gift. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you have brought these folks to join us and to be part of the body of Christ in this place. We ask that you would watch over them, bless them, use this church to be a blessing in their lives, and use them to be a blessing to you through this church. For all that you have done, we are grateful, and for all that you are yet to do, we look forward with great expectancy. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we have a little gift for you as you get started. Uh, these are made by Ray Gould, uh, who's been going through some real health problems lately, but he's still making these for us, and it's a, a lovely cross with a heart in it. We have one for each uh, household here. There's one for you, and one for you, my dear, and one for you, Mary. Okay, and then also uh, in these envelopes that I'm going to give you, we have, uh, we have a membership certificate, and this membership certificate is... Uh, Good at McDonald's for a free burger. That's it. I'm going to get confused. Brooks. Okay. Mary. And Sam and Kathleen Warren. Now, what I'd like you to do is just very briefly tell them your names and where you're originally from. You don't do this very often, so everybody be careful. <laughs> That one, okay. I'm Stan Barman, originally from Franklin, Indiana, and I lost a short straw when we had to move to Ohio. So. Oh, <laughs> yes, I, I, I lived in Ohio myself. We have a few Buckeyes in here. That's a, that's a, a useless nut. You know, okay, yeah. Go ahead. So Barry Brooks. Okay. So now we have we have we have Brooks here and we have Brooks and there are another Brooks too. Are they here? No, I think we have three Brooks couples. What's that? He is my, my my dear sympathies to you, my friend. And, and you are, Cleo? Cleo Simon, and I'm from Cleo Simon from a cold place, Minnesota. And I think we know you. Weren't you here before? Yeah. Central Lake, Michigan. Okay. Isn't that where the Morrises are from? Did you bring any of their money with you? Uh, I was going to say, we're really glad to have you. <laughs> Just kidding. Let's give them all a big round of applause and welcome to our church. Nancy, Nancy Doggett is our deacon chairman, and she's welcoming you on behalf of the congregation. Thanks so much. The Holy City.
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. It is good and right to shout us down. It is good and right to create a path for our God. Yet we leave these walls and no longer remember to shout us down. We remember to our lives as if little had happened. Remind us of our words of God. Remind us how much we consume and experience and then throw it away. Forgive us for our short memories, we pray, through Jesus. Amen. God forgives us our short memories, calling to us again and again to shout Hosanna, making a path for Jesus the Christ. Once again, our sins are forgiven. Ben's going to come and he's going to sing for us, Mary, Did You Know? Now, some of you are going to immediately think, wait a minute, that's a Christmas song. No, it's not. It's not a Christmas song at all. If you listen to the words, what it is is Mary understanding and asking questions about who Jesus is and, and how this child that she is holding and this man that she becomes a knowledgeable of as her son is, is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. This whole song is about the same things and the same themes that Palm Sunday is about. So it's, a, it's a, maybe even a more powerful song for Palm Sunday than it is for, for Easter time. So uh, the, the beautiful song, Mary, Did You Know, listen to the words as Ben sings. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day walk on water? Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make us new this child that you deliver will soon deliver you Mary did you know that your baby boy would give sight to a blind man Mary did you know that your baby boy would calm the storms with his hand. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And when you kiss this little baby, you've kissed the face of God. The blind will see, the deaf will hear, the dead will live again. The lame will leave, the dumb will speak, the praises of the Lamb. Mary, did you know that your baby boy is Lord of all creation. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule the nation? Did you know that your baby boy is the perfect land? This sleeping child you're holding is the great I am. Mary, did you know?
The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. We have a uh, prayer shawl this morning to dedicate, so if I could have a couple of ladies come up, and, or gentlemen, or whoever, and help. Uh, while, while you're coming, I want you to know that this is for uh, Arlene uh, Doman, and uh, she's been diagnosed with a, a malignant brain tumor and needs our prayers. Gracious Heavenly Father, so often we get ourselves into places and sometimes circumstances come to us that make life just nigh on to impossible. We don't always understand the whys of it all. But for this dear lady and the difficulty that she faces and the months that are, that are ahead of her and the struggle that is hers to bear, we ask for your presence. We ask that this prayer shawl and the work of the hands who made it, the prayers of this congregation that go with it, would somehow be a blessing and a strengthening for her as, as she faces her difficulty. Allow her to know that someone cares and that you love. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, just before we pray, I wanted to mention to you that uh, our friend Bill Deicher, who uh, was a deacon for many years here, and uh, as I mentioned to a couple weeks ago, he's the one who gave you those little wooden crosses in your holy uh, week kit. Uh, he's been up in uh, Pennsylvania and has recently transferred up to Sloan Kettering in New York uh, for surgery. Uh, he had a big melanoma and uh, it spread a little bit, so... He had surgery on Friday, and the surgery went really well. Uh, of course, it's still a wait-and-see game. But uh, why don't you keep praying for Bill, and, uh, and we're hoping for a complete recovery. We're hoping for him to beat this and get back to us uh, as soon as he possibly can. Also, this morning, I got a, uh, an email from uh, my friend Dana Parker, who is the uh, executive director of Love, Inc., uh, just a, a super capable young lady who's done an uh, amazing job with uh, our organization. Uh, and our whole board just loves her and, and depends on her so much. And so many people have been helped uh, by her hard work and her good ideas. Uh, last night, her husband uh, was in a terrible car accident, uh, flipped his truck over and hit a tree, uh, was taken up to uh, Ocala to the hospital. Uh, he's still hanging in there, but he's in the uh, trauma ICU, and he's already had some surgeries. Uh, and he's going to have to have some more surgery this week. So uh, we, we need to pray for, for Richard. We need to pray for, for Dana uh, as they go through this. Dana is supposed to be here to speak for me the first Sunday in, in June. So uh, we'll, we'll see if that still can happen or not. But uh, if not, we have another gal who's her associate. They'll come. But... Uh, like I said, they're just, they're just good people. And uh, what was that book, Why Do Bad Things Happen to Good People? And uh, Kirshner wrote. Uh, and I, I ask that question all the time. I could give God a list of a bunch of stinking rotten people. No, I don't know. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be good. So, uh, but but uh, I often wonder why, why is it always the, seems always the good people. But uh, Dana and Richard are, are good people, and Dana, Dana just needs to be supported. So pray, pray for them. Yes. I'm on Facebook with Dana, and we do the friends for a long time. And I just want to add that God bless her. She's so many things to say that you because she wrote this morning on Facebook that it was for people that know that person. I guess a lot of people thought it was her dad that was injured, and it's not her husband. So she wrote that, you know, to clarify that, she said, and her dad, well, he's in the way of Susan. That man is with Ben Ware. So she's a big fan of Yeah. And that, that brings up a good point. They're, they are very blessed because both of their parents, that's the parents, are still living, and, and so they do have a, a support uh, system. And uh, I think I think they have two children. I know they have one daughter. But anyway, uh, so pray for Dana, and uh, we we need her back, and we need him to be well, and uh, uh, that's all important. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. <clears throat> Hosanna, Hosanna. 
the gate opens, the king is coming. Jesus comes riding on a colt. Jesus comes with shouts of praise surrounding him. Jesus comes knowing in his heart of hearts that he has only a few more days to walk this earth. Jesus comes and we are in his heart. He knows each and every one of us by name. He loves each and every one of us. He listens to the praises of the people of the day, and he listens to our people this day as we praise him and worship him. We celebrate that he is our king. Oh, how we wish and pray and hope that he might come through the gate again, that he might establish peace on earth and goodwill among men, that he might heal those who are sick, that he might bless us all with the knowledge that we are ruled and reigned over by a heart that is filled with love and peace and joy. Today, Father, we, we pray for those that are in our hearts. We pray for Richard and for Dana, that you'd be with them, that you'd somehow help him to make it through this and, and to have a few deficits. We pray for our friend Bill Deicher, that you would be with him and help him recover from this cancer surgery and, and heal and be restored. There are many, Father, that we know in our congregation and our church family and in our extended families who are going through tough times. And these are difficult moments. Our grocery bills are going up, our gas prices are going up, and, and when we think about it, those things are not as big a deal as we try to make them. What really matters is our relationship with you, our health, our relationships with one another. We can struggle through the higher prices and we can make it through the things that we seemingly are bent on talking about endlessly, but we can't make it without you and we can't do it without one another. So today on this Palm Sunday as we enter Holy Week, we ask you to use these days to prepare our hearts for what is coming on Good Friday, the sacrifice of your son for us, his gift of a life that will last forever. And then we ask you to help us to really celebrate next Sunday when we see him walk forth from the tomb alive, telling us that because he lives, we too shall live. For all that you have done, Father, we are grateful. Hear us now as a testimony of our faith. We pray the prayer that Jesus taught when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I don't know. I don't know if, because of my short-term memory loss, I don't know if uh, I mentioned it during the announcements. But today is the last day to turn in your Easter remembrances. Uh, we, they go to press tomorrow. So uh, if you're going to do that, uh, and you don't have a form, you can pick one up on your way out today uh, off of the literature table and fill it out. And make sure that you drop it off in the office before you leave today. This time we worship the Lord with the receiving of our morning tithes and offerings.
Heavenly Father, what a good and gracious God. What a wonderful provider. You have helped us, ministered to us, healed us, provided for us, all along the path of life. And now we bring to your throne of grace these our offerings, our way of saying thank you for all that you have done for us. Bless these gifts, use them in your service, that the word of your Son, a word of love and peace and joy and salvation, might go forth from this place to touch the lives of many. But we pray these things in his name and for his sake. Amen. Good morning. Uh, the Bible reading this morning is from Luke 19, verses 28 through 40. When he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass when he drew Bethpage and Bethany at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, where as you enter, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you losing it, thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went on their way and found it just as he had said to them. But as they were loosing the coat, the owners of it said to them, Why are you loosing the coat? And they said, The Lord has need of it. Then they brought him to Jesus, and they threw their own clothes on the coat, and they set Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then, as he was drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called out to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stone, stones would immediately cry out, Hey, God bless you. Faces line the hallways, those whose lives have been redeemed. Broken homes that he has mended, those from prison he has freed. Little children and the aged, hand in hand, stand all aglow. Who've crippled, broken, ruined. Glad and calm is white as snow. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. 
Praise God, He's coming for me. I can hear the chariots rumble. I can see the marching throne. The glory of God's trumpets spell the end of sin and woe. Regal robes are now unfolding. Heaven's friend stands all in place. Heaven's choir now assemble. Start to sing amazing grace. Oh, the King is coming. The King is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding. And now his face I see. Oh, the King is coming. The King is coming. Praise God, He's coming for me. rocks or the stones would cry out. Here we go. Before the rocks cry out, I just have to praise him, just have to thank him. For all he has done Before all nature rises up to shout I just have to thank him For all he's done for me Before the rocks cry out I just have to praise him just have to thank him for all that he's done before a nation rises up, rises up to shout i just have to thank him for all he's done for me Tall stand and sing it before the rocks cry out i just have to praise him just have to thank him for all that he's done before all nature rises, rises up to shout i just have to thank him for all he's done for me Thank you. You may be seated. <laughs> we were right on the edge of having church, weren't we, Ben? Just yes. on, right on the edge. Right there. Right there. <laughs> Palm Sunday. What an amazing scene that must have been. I can't even begin to imagine the excitement. These people have been looking for generations for the Messiah to come. And Daniel the prophet wrote 500 years plus before this day, prophesying that on that very day that Jesus rode through the Eastern Gate, the Golden Gate, that the Messiah, the Prince, would come. And to the day, it was prophesied. And here he comes. And that's why they were excited. Not just because this preacher from Nazareth, this guy who been healing people in Capernaum had, had come, but they were excited because they'd been expecting, they'd been waiting for, for this day to arrive for over 500 years. Daniel the prophet, read Daniel chapter 9, talked about this. Messiah the prince shows up after all of these weeks and months of waiting. The Messiah comes. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the king. 
and he comes right through that eastern gate that was, was prophesied. It's the same gate that uh, the parents of Mary met at. It's the same gate where people had come and gone because it was so close to the temple itself that they would use this gate to be closer to the seat of where God was believed to be in the holy place. There are eight gates around the old city of Jerusalem. There are 12 gates in the Bible. We only know of eight today in the modern wall around the old city. Seven of those gates are passable. The eighth gate is blocked. And that eighth gate, that one gate that's blocked, is the eastern gate, the golden gate. And it is through that gate that Jesus is believed to have come on Palm Sunday. And it is through that gate that we believe that Messiah the Prince will come again, just as he promised. And he will ride in, in victory through that, that golden gate. And that golden gate is, is now blocked with blocks and uh, mortar and bricks because they, there are those who don't want him to come through that gate. As a matter of fact, they, they so don't want him to come through that gate, they so want to make sure that the prophecies don't come true, that Jesus does not return, that they actually planted a cemetery in front of the Golden Gate. Because they, they know that an Orthodox Jew, a rabbi, like Jesus was, in addition to being the Son of God, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, he was also, uh, in their mind, a great rabbi and teacher, would never defile himself by walking through that graveyard that close to those dead bodies, to those decaying corpses, and go through that gate to where the reestablished temple would one day be. So they believed that, that this was going to stop him. Now, is that not stupid? This is the guy that raises people from the dead. If he wants to go through there, he just goes... And they all come back to life. So they're, he's not going to get the file. I mean, it took me all about 15 seconds to read that. No, that's not going to stop him. And he's going to walk right on through. The dead will rise. And he will walk through that golden gate and bring life and rule and reign for a thousand years. And that's, that was the great hope of Palm Sunday. That this Messiah would come and establish his kingdom. But his kingdom that he came the first time to establish was, was a kingdom of love and peace and salvation. It was a kingdom of the heart. He came to set us free from, from our sins. He marched through that gate, rode through that gate, knowing that he was going to sacrifice himself. He was going to be the Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. He came through that gate to set us free. And we were on his mind. We were on his heart. And you may find that difficult to believe, but this isn't you and your intellectual abilities. This is Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, who was there at the creation of the world, who has every bit of knowledge and every bit of power in his cranium and in every ounce of his being and every fiber of his body. He knew you, and he knows you today. So Jesus comes through the gate. He's proclaimed, let's go back to that Palm Sunday. And, and think how those people must have felt. And some of them were, were overdoing it, probably. They were a little exuberant. So the, the rabbis and the religious types, and uh, we, we still have this stuff today, don't we? <laughs> We've got every denomination and every group, and every time somebody comes up with another idea or something happens in their church, synagogue, or, or temple that they, they don't like or they don't agree with, they run off and start another group. And so we've got, you know, all this myriad, I think there's 50 different churches plus in the villages area now. And, you know, the things that divide us are so minuscule and so separate. And yet the things that we ought to be coming together to battle and, and to help with and to do are, are so huge. That how can we stay separated like this? We, we need Jesus and we need faith in him and we need a commitment to him more than ever before. The problem is we have difficulty committing. We have difficulty committing to our nation. We have difficulty committing to our families, to our significant others. We're not even committed to ourselves and our own dreams and plans anymore. 
And so we need to learn to commit again, to, to, to sacrifice our self-nature to the nature of Christ himself. We need to be able to forget ourselves and shout Hosanna. We need to forget about politics and shout glory to the King of Kings who will reign forever and ever and ever. One day it will happen. One day, just as Daniel's prophecy from 500 years before the first Palm Sunday took place and the people went wild, so he will slip the eastern sky and he will come again and he will establish his kingdom just as he promised. And for those who, who are attuned to the things of the Spirit, for those who have the Holy Spirit living within them because of their faith in him, it will be a glorious, glorious day, a day of rejoicing, a day of shouting Hosanna, a day of welcoming him. For others, there'll be dead silence because they won't have a clue what's even going on. And sometimes uh, I think that the religious leaders, uh, the priests, the preachers, the, the religious types, uh, the denominational uh, leaders are, are, are perhaps going to be a little upset about the whole thing. And, and they may tell us to shut up. They may tell us to be quiet. They may say, you know, we don't want your church doing this Jesus stuff. We think you ought to just feed the hungry and uh, send in your tithes and money to the national church and, and just be quiet. That's, isn't that what they did on Palm Sunday? The religious types, the leaders, the, the, the muckety-mucks, uh, the people who were supposed to be in the know, told the average people, the people in the pews, in this case the people in the streets with their palm branches, to be quiet. And they were told, if these keep quiet, the very rocks will cry out. The rocks will cry out. And you say, wait a minute, rocks can't cry out. I mean, what are you, nuts? Come on now. Rocks crying out. When I was a young fellow, we went to uh, the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. And we went to a place uh, near Front Royal called Luray Caverns. And we went down underneath the earth hundreds of feet. And we walked through the cavernous cavern. And there were stalactites and stalagmites and... Uh, they had taken and, and run wires throughout this mammoth cave. There is a place called Mammoth Cave, too. But anyway, uh, and they ran all these wires around. And, and on each stalactite and stalagmite, they, they, they tested them. they strike them with a little hammer. And, and it would uh, emit a tone. And so they would hook up a, an electronic hammer to strike it and run the wire. So that when they press the key on, the, on this gigantic organ... It would cause that to be struck. And all throughout the cavern, they had, they had these strikers and they had this wife and this fantastic big church organ. And they would, they would have concerts down in the, in the cavern. And people would play. Can you imagine Nancy Doggett playing Amazing Grace? The rocks would cry. So, so you think rocks, rocks can't cry out? In the Louis Caverns, they made rocks cry out. And Kevin's played the piano this morning, which is operated because of a, ca a hammer striking a string, and the string's made of metal, and metal comes from what? Rocks. The rocks will cry out. Whatever God wants, it will happen. Whether you believe it or not, it will happen. Jesus is coming back, whether you believe it or not, it will happen. It doesn't, it doesn't depend on, on I think this or I think that or I've got a degree in one little thing so that makes me a genius in everything. You know, we've got a bunch of educated idiots in the world today. Seriously. We think because we have a degree in a, a BA or a BS, uh, and a lot of it is BS, but anyway, uh, or, or a, an MA or even a PhD in one little area of knowledge that that means we're smart. That ought to tell you how dumb you are. It ought to tell you how much you don't know. It ought to tell you the amazing amount of stuff there is to know that you're not aware of. And one of the things a lot of people are not aware of is that Jesus will come again. He will establish his kingdom. He's made that promise. As those people hold for 500 years and they lived on that hope and they flourished on that hope, 
They, they went, went through, through all kinds of persecution and all kinds of uh, harassment from other nations and so on. They, they survived on that hope. You better start hoping too. You better start believing too. The king is coming. The king is coming. Thank God he's coming for you. This, I believe, is a hymn. I think we have words. Yes. All glory, laud, and honor. He thinks we have words. We do. Oh, good. Can I have a word with you? <laughs> Would you stand and sing with me? Here we go. The presence of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. Wherever you are, wherever you go, whatever you do, there God is. Thanks so much for coming. Thanks for watching. Have a great week.